Hey guys, today I'm going to be walking you through one of my signature finer edits. I have a bridal portrait that I think would make a really cool black and white finer edit. And I'm going to go ahead and show you step by step on how I create it. So let's go ahead and jump right into Lightroom here. So I'm going to be choosing this image right here. It's uh, just a bridal portrait taken right in front of these windows in the bridal suite of this venue. And yeah, I think it'd be, look, be a really cool black and white image. So let's go ahead and um, get started here. Go into the develop module. And first I'm going to just crop in a little bit to center the bride here. And then also just kind of level it out a tad. Always seem to shoot at a slight angle. Um, I always have to fix that in post. So go ahead and that looks about good. Right there, yeah. All right, and now first I'm going to, or second, I'm going to apply my monochrome preset here to change it to black and white. And it's, uh, you can see it's a pretty big difference already. I'm going to, but it's a bit too contrasty for the look I'm going for. So I'm gonna raise the black slightly, increase the shadows a bit. Going to decrease highlights down to about minus 20 there, increase exposure, couple bumps. Let's see right there, let's increase the blacks a little more. So you decrease the exposure tad and yeah, I don't know, I think I'm look, liking that so far. And just turning the black and white and making a few adjustments, it, you know, this, the image looks good and I could call it a day and just uh, leave it as is, but I'm going to take it a few steps further and create more of a fine art portrait. So to do that, let's go ahead and take it into Photoshop. And here it is, okay. I can see there are some distracting elements. There's like a little end table with a old timey record player, a, a light switch, and then another like end table over on the left side. And I'm going to go ahead and remove those with gener the generative AI fill in Photoshop, as well as the kind of fire alarm, I believe that's right here. I'm going to leave, I could probably take out the piping, but I'm going to leave that. Um, but the other stuff I'm going to remove using Generative AI and I'm just going to lasso around it, click fill, generative fill, and then leave the dialog box empty and just let Photoshop do its thing. And it does a pretty good job uh, at removing items a whole lot easier than it used to be. Um, it does take a little bit of time, not a, whole, not a whole lot, but it does take a little bit of time. And for the sake of you guys waiting, I'm going to just speed up that process in post so you don't have to... Uh, wait forever for it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so See, I removed those end table to the left and to the table to the right, as well as the uh, fire alarm on the ceiling. And when doing these finer edits, I find just removing those small details, those small distracting elements, um, is what really kind of makes a finer image into a fine art image. So, kind of creating a simple canvas as much as you can and just really highlighting the subject and the environment that the subject is in. And as simple as you can, I find makes the um, most kind of dramatic and uh, nice, you know, best looking finer edit. So and that's just, well, that's my taste, you know, feel free to add the image the way you feel. Now the generative AI kind of created this wall here. This is slightly, created a slightly blotchy um, so I'm going to kind of smooth that. I'm just going to create a layer, grab my brush here, and I'm going to go about this size brush. It's going to be soft. 
um, you know, right click. The hardness will be zero, so it's soft brush. And um, I'm going to just hit Alt to grab the color, get the eyedropper, and get this color of the wall right here. And I'm going to, with my flow about 3%, just lightly brush over the wall here. And I'm going to keep sampling different parts of the wall that are near it to help kind of um, help with the blending to kind of get rid of that blotchiness that the generative AI kind of created there. It just happens from time to time and it's fairly easy to blend so it's not that big of a deal and it's fairly quick. And you don't have to get too crazy with it. And then I usually typically will reduce the opacity by a little bit. That's for this one, thinking about 85%. And uh, I think that looks good enough. And steps that we uh, do in a little bit will kind of help blend that, blend that even further. So I'm not too worried about it right now. And we can always come back if need be. So right now I'm going to add a bit of sun flare in this window. So we have some sunlight coming in, but I wanna make it a little more dramatic. And so I'm gonna add um, a sun flare overlay into it to enhance the lighting and I find with these types of images um, when doing this type of stuff or adding in a sun flare you can't just add it to any image you for me I, I like to make it believable I don't want it, someone to be like oh wow yeah that was added in Photoshop um, I just want it to look as natural as I can and so when Someone does look at the image, um, they're just thinking, oh wow, that's a really cool image, not about, oh, that was Photoshop. So uh, the key is to enhance any lighting that's in the scene, um, not just add it out of nowhere. So, um, so I add in this layer with this sun flare and I'm going to set the type, the, that layer to screen. And then I'm going to place that image going to move it to more center right as if the sun was shining right through that window I'm going to make it a little bit larger let's see I think right there is good now since this is a black and white image um, and that sun flare has some warmth to it I'm going to add a hue saturation layer above it and click this little downward arrow thing right here and that only will the hue saturation will only affect the layer below it and then i'm going to reduce saturation to minus 100 and then now the saturation um now that the warmth of that some flare is now gone so now you can see kind of like the before and after and in that sun flare i'm going to reduce the opacity just by a couple down to 95 percent and so now you see like the bright is pretty washed out because the flare is over on top of it, on top of her. So to kind of reduce that, I'm going to click the original um, image, which is labeled background. I'm going to select subject, which should select our bride here. And Photoshop does a pretty good job on trying to figure out what her subject is. As you can see, it does have it shows looks like she has a giant nose, but it's actually look it's look like a highlight some of the uh, window frame. So I'm gonna grab my lasso tool here and pressing Alt will you could get a minus. And so I'm gonna just lasso around this piece. Uh, should get rid of it, and then also look like a, it's getting some of this window because they're right here. So I'm gonna outline her a bit. And then that's where her hand is. And maybe a little bit down here where her elbow is. Down into the veil in the window. And then to add, you can press shift and you'll see the little plus. And now I can add in her hand that Photoshop missed. So I'm going to add that in. And it looks like it missed some of her veil. So to make sure. It's consistent I'm gonna go ahead and or not reveal her uh, her train so I'll go ahead and add in that piece 
and yeah, looks good. I'm gonna go click the sun flare and then click um, the layer mask and then um, control I to invert it. And then now you see our bride is not affected with that sun flare. However, the, it's, the contrast is a bit stark since um, right now the the layer mask, you know, she's 100% removed from that sun flare. So to kind of bring back in a little bit of the sun flare over her, I'm going to click in the layer mask and the density is 100 and I'm going to reduce it by a little bit. Say so right now it's at 88. And you can see if I reduce that all the way down to zero, it brings back in that sun flare completely over her again. So that's what the density slider does. And um, for this, it's really kind of to taste. I, I want to add, adjust it so it kind of blends in the sun flare with her as it would naturally if that if it was a huge glare coming in through the window like that. However, not completely overpowering the contrast. Um, of like her hair in her, in her body. So I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I like that. I'm just gonna go ahead with a brush, click in the mask here, get, bring up my brush with a low pass uh, or low flow at 3%. Um, going to slightly re uh, get, uh, get rid of the uh, window frame or mask, just kind of bring that contrast back in go over her hair a little bit to bring in some more contrast on her arm. Arm and hand on this side. And this is just to really kind of sell it and make it more believable in a way. Just make sure the what the flare that we added in um, looks more natural and not, uh, not fake. So just kind of brushing in the areas that I feel it needs to do. You can always click in and out. It looks like Photoshop missed these two spots over here. So I'm going to change my brush to white, bring up the flow here and add that in. That's That was a weird mistake by Photoshop. And so, okay. Zoom out a bit, get more of a global view. And I think I'm liking it. Looks good. Okay. Next, we're going to add a fine art texture over the image to kind of enhance the contrast and give the whole image just a textured look to it, which I like, and especially for a fine art edit. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this monochrome texture overlay and make it as big as the image same size and I'm going to set the layer to overlay reduce the opacity to about 50% 50 to 60 this is to taste so kind of depends on image to image how strong or or light I want to set the opacity for the textured layer um, and then kind of similar thing with the the uh, sunlight, I'm going to reduce the opacity on the subject. So to kind of copy this layer, I can just hit Alt, click on the layer mask and drag it to textured and then just copies that layer mask. And um, for this, I usually like to set the density to about 70%. So we'll go ahead and set that about 70. And so that's without, with, without, with. You can see it just kind of gives a textured look, more of a fine art peel and enhances the uh, contrast a bit. It just gives it a more kind of fantasy type look, which is pretty cool in my opinion. So we can, uh, again, plus with opacity. So here's like, go to a hundred, just look. I think that's too much. Let's go down to 60. Make maybe a little more right here around 63. We'll leave it at 63. I think I like that. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna zoom out. I like zooming it out just to kind of give an overall look. 
and then zoom in. Just and then really check to see if there is anything that might have been missed or looks weird. Fix now, so it's not baked into the final image. Um, I'm liking it. We could add more sun. You know, let's go ahead and just add another sun flare. See how that looks. It might be too much. Sometimes that happens. Like you go a little too far with the edit, and then you have to step back and um, remove what you just did. But you know, you don't know until you try. So let's go ahead and grab. Let's see. Let's go ahead and grab. I want to kind of like a sun star effect. Maybe this one. Let's go ahead and see how this is gonna look. So click OK. I'm gonna set this as screen, and then let's and let's enlarge it a bit. I need to zoom out here. And zoom out. Okay. Now let's see. Let's really enhance it. Get some. Unfair. Let's see, trying to find the right positions. I kind of like that. All right, and then again, we're going to, let's put this underneath the fine art edit. And then, or the fine art underneath the, the, um, the uh, textured overlay. So, cause that needs to pretty much be the, the last step to affect the, have the same effect on the, uh, anything that you added in. I'm going to add, copy that layer mask. So you can see, so it brings back the bride. I think I might reduce opacity a little bit more, the density on her, or increase it to, let's see, 90, let me go to 100. Yeah, cause I don't want that flare affecting her too much and washing her out. So you can see add a little bit of pizzazz. So that's with, without, with, without. I don't know, what do you think? Like it too much? Looks cool. Doesn't look cool, you hate it. You hate it with a passion. Right now you just want to punch me in the face if you could. I don't know. I kind of like it. It's my picture, so I'm gonna do what I want. And I just reduced the opacity to 81, which I feel works well. Let me see. Let's fill up the frame here. So quick um, control zero will enlarge the uh, larger canvas to full screen. So you can get a better look at the entire image. And really kind of overlooking it and really looking through it. Um, I know there's this pipe here. Ah, I don't love it. I don't like it at all, actually. I could remove it, but I feel like it's a um, distinctive feature in this bridal suite. So I feel like if I remove that, people who know this bridal suite will know that I did a lot of Photoshop work to it. Um, and I don't like my fine art edits. I mean, they're definitely Photoshop for sure, but I don't like them to be, to look as if they're heavily Photoshop. You know, I like to, to be, look as, um, you know, almost, not, I wouldn't say natural, but just I want to seem like it was done naturally, I guess. I don't want it to be, look too crazy. I'm just trying to enhance the light that's there and remove uh, any distracting pieces that don't need to be within the frame, like these side tables that we moved earlier. Um, so even though I could remove the pipe, um, I think I'm just gonna leave it. And let's see, I'm gonna zoom out, get another look. And don't be afraid to just kind of like walk away from your computer and come back in 15 minutes, let your eyes reset. And sometimes you'd be surprised to come back and be like, whoa, like, what was I thinking? That looks awful. Um, so sometimes taking a step away for a few minutes and then coming back kind of recalibrates your eyes and uh, kind of helps you from going too far, which sometimes you can do, go too far in the edit. 
Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, I am thinking I'm just gonna call it quits here. I think I, I think it looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all the layers. I'm gonna flatten an image. Now this is probably going to make a lot of Photoshop purists angry because I'm making it, you know, I'm just, you know, making it um, so you can't like make any other edits later on. You know, this is gonna be the final image and it can't be changed, um, but I'm okay with that. And the way I edit and uh, do these, you know, I'm not gonna come back and tweak one of the layers at a later point. Uh, if I'm gonna do a re-edit, I would probably just start from scratch like we did um, at the beginning. So uh, just for the sake of not having a bunch of Photoshop PSD files saved um, that I'm probably never gonna look at, I just like to flatten the image and then Control S to save it. And then what that's gonna do is gonna save this copy into Lightroom. And so I'm gonna close out here and then go back into Lightroom. And you'll see we have our final image and now it's in Lightroom and its own um, its own file here. So you can see the, uh, so I'll show the original and then the, so the original edit with uh, the, the original image and then the fine art image. So you can kind of see the two there and Go back to the image that we just created. And yeah, and then from here you can make even, if you feel like you need to maybe bring down the shadows or the highlights, you can do that a tad. You can't, you shouldn't really edit this too much because it, it's not, it's, uh, it's a tip file and everything's kind of baked into the file as is, but you can make small minor adjustments to like contrast if, if you need to, but. Um, I think that is looking good. And then from here, we can just export it and we're done. So I hope you found that helpful and enjoyed kind of um, going step by step through how I go from a raw image to a black and white fine art image. And if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down twice. Thumbs down if you hate black and white images and you once was in a bridal suite trying to take an image like this and you backed up too far into the bathroom and fell over the toilet. Toilet seat was open and up. So you submerged your rear end into the water and the rest of the wedding you had a wet butt All right, I'm getting all track here. All right, guys. Hope you had a good one. Thanks for watching. Bye.